Hey guys, Club Car President here. We're gonna do a Eco Battery 105 amp hour. Just wanna kinda of show you the steps. So right now, I've got all the batteries out of there. I just sprayed that down, wiped it down real clean. We're gonna remove some of that wiring. We're gonna remove the old voltage reducer because we're gonna have a new one. And uh, anyway, pretty simple install. So um, I'm sure there's some other ones out there, but uh, this is gonna be my version of it. So. That's where we're going to start and let's move on. All right, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to notch this out. Uh, the batteries fit much better in here without this notch here. So the tool that I'm going to use is going to be this little side cutter deal I got from Lowe's. So not a bad deal. So let me uh, cut that out and go from All right, there. guys, I made the cut. Not a whole lot of support underneath there. So I don't think I compromised any of the structural of the floorboard here. So uh, let's move on to the next. Right, the next step is going to be to take the body up a little bit. We're gonna take this cover off of the charging port. What I use is a little pick, stick it in the side, squeeze it to the outside, and that'll come right off. Save that. Next step is the forward and reverse switch, T25. Take that off. Again, save your screws. And now we're going to, uh, actually, you know what? I, I probably can leave that connected for right now. If I need to take it loose, I'll take it loose later. So the next thing I want to do is I want to lift this body up. Those are T30s. Guys, sorry about the video. I'm trying to do this with one hand. There you go. So let's see. And this I'm just going to take pretty loose. They're about a, maybe an inch long. And I can leave them in place. This way we can grab the body, lift it up, and then we're going to slide this out. Next step is to take these side plates loose and just back them, back them off. Now, when I do take those side plates off, I generally like to use a little tool like this. It does have some little small plastic retainers which can break. So if you can squeeze it underneath there, just gently pop it loose. That's probably all you're gonna need. We're actually gonna pick this floor mat up, but you can see it's loose enough where I can squeeze it out. I'm gonna do the same to the other side and I'll start the film. All right, we got our floor mat up. Um, and we're gonna need to do that because we're gonna run a, a signal wire, probably up, probably up that track right there to the dash. And I'll show you about all that. So got everything loose, floor mats up, got my body up. I took these three bolts out for this uh, charging port kick plate or whatever you wanna call it. Now I'm gonna just get this out of the way for now. So we're gonna actually remove this charging port here. You got three Phelps head screws. You can see those two and that one. And then we're going to work on cleaning up this mess. So we're gonna, that wire goes into there behind the box. Hey, while I got it, everything out of it, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and make a neat install. So we're gonna remove the wire. All right, guys, I took this screw loose. I should, it's not very tight, it's in plastic. That is a T40. Once you get the T40 loose, save all these bolts now because you're gonna to need to reuse them. Uh, that is a wire to the uh, Bluetooth radio, but we're gonna clean that up a little bit. So what I can do is just kind of pull those out the way. Good thing is there's no voltage, right? So we got plenty of room. And yeah, we try and do this with one hand, guys. Here we go. So that's where your controller, solenoid, all, all your other stuff is at. So this wire right here, which is wired to my charging port, which is gonna come out. So I'm gonna find out where it comes in in the back and it comes in right here. So I'm gonna find out where it connects to and just totally take it out. So I'll need both hands to do that. But when I do, if there's anything different back here, I'll film it. Okay guys, so I got it kind of laid to the side. Uh, there was a zip tie down here that connected 
all these cables together and I just cut it loose, no big deal. And so once I cut it loose, this wiring harness here is the one that goes to everything. So one of these leads, this red lead, goes around here to my solenoid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that little half inch screw loose and these aren't that tight. You can see I'm using a little shorty ratchet. You can use whatever you want, but anyway, it's not that tight. Once I get it off, there is a lock nut behind there. So let's be sure we put that back. All right, so that comes off. Put my lock nut back. And this wire right here is your positive post to your battery, so. A little different doing this with one hand, but again, this will help some of you guys. I'll probably share this to some of my customers. I don't know if I mentioned, but I am an eco battery dealer. And then the other screw is that half inch right there. So I'm gonna unplug the controller very carefully. Here we go, get access to it. And I'm gonna leave the negative terminal, the negative cable, which is right there. I just wanna get this off. Okay. I don't have a torque wrench, but I don't know. 20, 30 pounds of pressure. It's not a whole lot. So once I get that off, get this out of the way. There's also a blue wire. So the dark blue wire plugs into the light blue wire, but it's just a plug. I'm gonna have to lay the phone down and do that. There we go. So all it did was just pull out. It's still insulated, so I'm just gonna leave it loose. Guess what, another zip tie. So there's a fuse behind there. Let's cut that loose. That, my friend, I tell you, before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this negative cable back up. All right, guys, I just need two hands. So you can see right there, we've um, only got the negative cable terminal there. I did plug up my controller. That wire is gonna be left loose. It's not gonna hurt a thing. And now everything on the charging port is loose. So we'll pull this out the way. Gentle tugging on that. All right, let's see what my, let me just snag it in there. There we go. So, that's your old charging port with the fuse. I got rid of this harness. You know, some videos may tell you just to cut them. <laughs> um, I like getting it out of the way. So now our next job is to put this back where it belongs. All right, ready to unpack the battery. This is definitely gonna be a two-handed job. Um, one thing I want you to note when you unpack this battery, and maybe you're doing this for your customers, go ahead and write down the serial number because they're gonna need that serial number when they register it online. So. Now let me lift this battery out. All right, when I lifted it out of the box, these, that's your hold down bracket. So that's just like a little spacer washer. It's gonna go right on top. And these two here is what's gonna cover your positive and negative post. And there's your studs for your battery. Uh, so I saw online where someone got one and uh, said that these were missing. They could have been but also they're kind of hidden right there on the side of the styrofoam. So if you're not careful, you could easily throw them away. All right away. guys, next step, let's go ahead and mount this uh, voltage reducer. So I'm gonna choose to mount it right over here against the back wall next to the uh, uh, run to switch panel. Um, you'll have enough room for the eco battery to sit in here. And it's just gonna, again, create a little extra room over there in case the customer does wanna store something underneath there. So, uh, you can tell that these new voltage reducers have a little harness with a quick pin, and we'll go over wiring up the other side now. But first thing I'll do is I want to mount it, and I don't want to mount it where it pushes in on these wires and causes a problem here. So, 
I'm actually going to elevate it up on the uh, back plastic wall here and just screw through this plastic panel. There's nothing behind it. All right, see, I've got it mounted in there. I've got plenty of room down here so it won't pinch the wires. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug up this harness and just push it over to the side while I set the battery in. Now, I've got the battery set in place, but let me show you something. Remember that little notch down there? Let's see if I can get it to focus in on there. Camera focus in on there. But that's the notch that I cut out. There it is. All right. So the reason I cut that notch out, you can see you probably don't have to do it. But when you do, your battery is shifted all the way forward. There's a shot of it right there. And if I look down the hole, look where your rod is. So your J-hook has to hook to that rod in order for that rod to be in the center. Because my J-hook rod, we're going to install it from underneath. It actually... The hooking point is going to be right down the center of that rod. So if you don't want this to mount at an angle, I would suggest to snip that off. It doesn't take but a second. And then we're going to go from the bottom and we're going to feed the rod up, catch it on the bracket or washer, whatever you want to call that thing. And that's what fits in right there. And then we're going to take the nut and tighten it down. All right, so now I'm underneath the cart. I'm going to take my J rod. And I am going to fish it Whoop, wrong way so it goes on the outside hole. So I'm going to fish it up there. And as you bump it with two hands, it'll go right in place. And I'm going to have to hold, hold it with two hands, but it will go up there and it'll hold on to that rod just like the factory one did. So it's staying in place, but it's probably going to fall. So let's go up top, grab hold of that. And I'm going to grab that spacer and that uh, nut, and I'm going to tighten it down. All right, the next thing we're going to install is going to be the charging port. Really pretty cool the way it just snaps into the charger. So you can see it's got three ears. Uh, we're going to feed that through there with the same Phillips head screws that came off of it. And uh, the pigtail will be sticking out of there. And I promise you, before we finish, we're going to clean up this mess. But let's go. Got for it, it mounted up with those three screws. Uh, of course, I shouldn't have to say this, but put all three of them in with just a couple, three, four threads, and then work your way all the way around, and then snug it up. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, this customer has some underglow lights. I've already cut the connectors off of it. Uh, it also has headlights. You can see a little bit of corrosion from the uh, lead acid batteries. Of course, that ain't gonna happen again. So now, while you got it apart, now's the time to go ahead and. Uh, just cut those connectors off and put new ones on. Okay, so I've got my power accessories uh, uh, wired in to my red and black output. So that's gonna be 13.5 output or something like that. So it's actually written on the top of the uh, voltage reducer. So if you look at the 40 to 90 volt plus, which is yellow and the black, and then you've got an orange for the key. We're gonna jump on that next. So right now, the battery is off. I just got them loosely screwed so I know where my wires are gonna be. So they're not definitely not tightened. I still need to put the cable on for the battery charger and mount it. But right now, I'm gonna focus on this wire, which is gonna have your orange ring terminal. We're gonna cut that off. But I fed that through the hole before I put this bottom plate on, and I'm going to route it. Probably do what the previous installer did, put a little tape to keep it in place. And we're gonna take this dash apart and mount our gauge. Right, take this dash off. There's a 30 torx here, a 30 torx there, and then right up top here, there is a 15. So let's see if I can, pretty simple. See if I can do this with one hand. All right, they don't always stick like that. I'm gonna change the bit on my drill. And this is the 15, which is up top. You see the whole thing just kind of let loose. Now, when I'm tightening these, I don't go crazy on them because I don't want to strip them out. So this will just snap down. There's going to be a metal clip behind here. At least they're supposed to be. So let's get that off. There it is right there, the metal clip. Now, we're going to take this trigger wire and we're going to put it on the switched side of your ignition switch. So what that basically means is when the run toe switch is on run and your key, your key, this right, this green wire has 48 volts all the time. 
uh, this wire here turns hot when the key switch is cut on. So what's gonna happen is when we cut the key switch on, it energizes your voltage uh, reducer, and that way your headlights will only work when the key's on and any other accessories. So take the key off, it automatically kills everything. I really like that feature myself. Some people like to wire them straight, but not me. So let's go to the next section. All right, so I've ran that wire right here in the harness. You can see it's got the little uh, plastic harness, I guess. It goes up to the top and then I snipped off the end so I wouldn't have too much wire. But then I put this cool little piece on there. Look at that, I found that on Amazon. So what that will allow me to do, there's a female, let me make sure to get in on focus. There's a female end to it and it's got a little metal plug. So what I can do now is take my blue wire. Now I know it's the blue one because I've done so many of these, but before I just took a test light and checked it, I can plug in the female side of it. Now it leaves me with a male side and I'm just, see if you can see that. There you go. And so I'm gonna bend it up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my blue wire and plug it in that little tab. Kind of makes a neat install. Not saying if you don't just strip it and wire it together, it won't work, but right, that was a little tough with one hand, so I had to stop the film. But you can see where the blue wire is on that tab. My trigger wire's there, and it doesn't matter one way or the other. If you wanted to cut that off and put that connector on, as long as they're both connected at the same time, um, and they're not touching each other. You got plenty of insulation. Now we're ready to put it ready to get our hole for our gauge. Um, the hole saw that I'm using is a two and three sixty fourths inch or 52 millimeter. We got it off Amazon, it wasn't a whole lot of money. I don't know what kind of quality it is, but you know what? It's green, just like the Eco battery, just like this golf cart. <laughs> and uh, the only thing I use it for is plastic. So my place of choice is right where you see that little indention. Um, the gauge works good there. Um, I've done other carts that way and they turned out nice. Um, now, the previous installer installed this headlight switch. You really should have used that indention, but I didn't install it. I'm just uh, installing the eco battery, but uh, it, one way or the other, it works the same way. So now let me cut a neat switch and I am going to use both hands because I don't want to mess up. All right, so I got my hole cut. I'm getting ready to mount my really nice LCD gauge. Um, it does come with a bracket, some little seven, mil seven millimeter nuts. So I'm gonna snug that in, just snug enough where I can rotate in case I wanna center it, but not so snug that it's loose. So let me get to work on it. All right guys, uh, I did forget one little thing, the wiring harness for the gauge. So I went ahead and pulled this tape up and I ran the wiring harness for the gauge in the same little track that I ran for the uh, trigger wire. So at the end of your gauge, you've got a eight pin and a four pin. There's the gauge mounted. It looks nice. Real simple to get to that. So let's go ahead and button that up. And what I did was I took any excessive wire and I'm gonna bundle, up, bundle it up and zip tie it up here real neatly. This will plug in right to the side of the battery once I get ready for that. And you're gonna notice two extra pins. Um, from what I understand, this is for possibly Navitas kits or future diagnostics. But for right now, just leave them loose. Don't worry about it. You're not missing a thing. So let's All jump right, guys. On. Got the dash back together. Got the gauge there. We'll see what that looks like lit up here in a second. Um, but before I put the uh, carpet or uh, floor mat back in, I want to show you something. And until this happens to you, you'll all appreciate this. These two screws, they tend to rust. Now these other two over here, it goes into plastic, so they will work their way their way out. So what I'm gonna suggest you to do, anytime you get it off, put a little dab of WD-40. Let's just let it soak in. Put the uh, mat right on top of that, and if it doesn't help you out, it's gonna help the next person out. All right, so the next step is going to be to mount the uh, battery right, charger. got the charger mounted, so it comes with four stainless steel screws, so, I saw someone else on another video mount it there. Now I'm just gonna get these wires. Screwed. All right guys, got the charger installed. I did run the wires underneath the bottom and I'm gonna zip tie those there. I'm gonna re-secure that one. I've got them mounted up here. And remember when you mount them, you mount the 
uh, like this on the positive side, you'll mount the positive that goes to the controller first, closest to the battery, then the next thickest wire, which is going to be the uh, charger, and then the next wire is going to be your voltage reducer. So I go from thick to thin towards the end. And uh, once I get these snugged up, I'll put the caps on there and I'll be ready to take this thing for a test drive. Almost. All right, guys, I um, think I'm about finished. So I showed you the charger earlier. I did do some wire management. Get all that right there in the center section. we got all this extra area here. You can see I've got the gauge mounted. Um, as soon as I plugged it in, it was at 42%. It won't take me about two or three hours to do a 100% charge. Still running 52 volts. And everything is ready to roll. So let me put the seat on, take for a test drive. All right, guys, she's done. So we just successfully completed a lithium battery uh, upgrade. As you can see, we've got the uh, Eco Battery 105. I did mount my power uh, voltage reducer right there. Battery charger over here. Done checked, everything works fine. Zip tied as much as I could. And if you look down there, it's just a little small area. The customer can grab his run toe switch very easily. The dash looks awesome. So try to get the glare off of it. There you go. Um, voltage reducer does work with the key switch. So when you cut the key switch on, uh, this particular card, I've got a Bluetooth radio, headlights, and underglow lights. So we just took it for a drive. And uh, this video is not about this, but I also did a Plum Quick Bandit upgrade at the same time. And we're getting 31, 32 miles an hour. So hopefully some of those install tricks will uh, help you guys when you do that. Uh, don't forget, I am an eco battery dealer. I do ship. So if you want to do one of these conversions yourself, shoot me a private message. Um, you know, email me, whatever you want to do. And I'll try to put all that stuff in the description. And hopefully we can have you lithium charged. Thanks for tuning in.